So we're gonna reload. You know, I was gonna just fast forward, but I, I, I can't really do that because there's treasures in this game. So whatever, we'll just go get all the treasures again. Um, but we went over to his house and we watched him beat Mega Man. And um, I think you already said that. Uh, it was actually really cool. We sat there for hours watching this guy play this game. You know, in the game now, you watch, you uh, play through it yourself, and if you're good at it, you could beat it in like a half hour without much of a problem, maybe a little bit more. But we sat for hours and watched him because he kept dying and failing. It's a hard game, and you know, you, you didn't have access to all these ticks, uh, tricks and um, tips like you do today. So we watched him, and he eventually did make it to the end of the game, and he eventually did beat Dr. Wily, probably after dying and continuing a thousand times, and that was extraordinarily impressive. And it was communal. You know, we all kind of shared in that. I remember then and other times, we're all gathered around the television, and you know, we're on the edge of our seats, you know, we're, we're sitting, uh, you know, maybe sitting on our feet or Indian style or something, and we're just watching, and we are enthralled by whatever's going on on the screen. And the fact is, it's probably nothing. It's nothing impressive. You know, it's somebody who uh, nearly got hit by a turtle shell and narrowly avoided it in Super Mario Brothers 3. You know, stomped on it again to stop it from rocketing toward him, and we were so impressed by that because that stuff is fun. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get whatever's over there. Um, it was just a good time. And I don't know, I kind of miss that. I remember another time a friend of mine brought over the game Captain Skyhawk. Nobody even cares about Captain Skyhawk today. But back then he brought it over and we had, you know, like a two liter bottle of Pepsi or something and we stayed up all night passing the controller back and forth and playing Captain Skyhawk. I don't even remember if it was two-player. It doesn't matter. It was a crappy game. But it was so much fun. There was also one Saturday morning I remember waking up and um, I saw GamePro TV, which I had never seen before. I knew the magazine GamePro, and then I saw that they had a television show. Again, before the internet, this is the kind of thing you found out firsthand or through word of mouth. You wouldn't have known otherwise. Um, and I, I woke up, I don't know what time it was, 7 in the morning or something it was on, and that was very early for me back then. And I sat and I watched GamePro, and it was probably talking about games I'd never had or cared about. And I told a friend of mine about it, and um, the next uh, Friday night or something he slept over with the express purpose of getting up early so we could watch GamePro on TV, and I could prove to him that it existed. Kind of speaking of that, you guys all know Navigator, by the way, right? On YouTube, and he's got those really ridiculous, pointless video game reviews. Um, I've seen comments to the effect of, uh, oh, people say this was on TV, there's no way this was ever on TV. Uh, it was, and I was in South Jersey. I think he, it was Delaware or something else he was broadcasting out of, um, but we got it in South Jersey. It might have been on public access or something. But I have actually, as a kid, I had watched Navigator on TV. Those were all segments uh, that were, um, they're cut. The ones you see on YouTube, you'll see him talking for three or four minutes about Super Metroid or something. Uh, and those are all segments that were cut from the full version of the show, where in each episode he would uh, talk about a bunch of games. I don't remember how many there were, I don't think I saw it very often. But having seen him again on YouTube when everyone was making fun of him, I... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it had a very slow dawning memory that I actually used to watch that guy on TV. There we go. Mid transformation too. Oh, so that picture of the um, the little icon before we chose the stage, that uh, I'll show you here. And we're racking up the cash now. See, there, we can't go back to the other ones, but there's a gem there, and a crown, and green cheese for the moon. So, um, that must be the, uh, the item, uh, the treasure you're looking for in this stage. And you get different, um, 
different endings, or at least different ending screens, depending upon how much treasure you bring home uh, at the end of the game. Uh, okay. Oh, so now I can get in here. Well, okay, that was easy. Uh, all right. Hello again. So, you know, not the greatest game design through and through, but still a great game. Hey, man, I remember some of these secrets. This is a little strange. Man, I wish I knew it was in Transylvania at the, uh, on the other side of whatever the hell that was. Oh, you cheater. But yeah, it's sometimes, it's a little sad growing up. You know, things were so much fun back then. Everything. You know, and it, it really is true. You, you never really know what you have until you don't have it anymore. Because I, I think I'd give anything to go back to those days. Ah. You know, everything's just so carefree. That's not to say that growing up doesn't have its advantages. Of course it does. I think it's just very easy to um, romanticize the past pretty much universally. I'm sure people have lived lives, so it's very hard to do that with. Um, I'm very curious about what's up here now. Oh, come on. Are they gone? Yep. That's why you don't do that. Because I think you can get over that wall on the left-hand side. very Mega Man section here. Oh, can I get over there? Oh, I think you gotta, you have to jump on that guy's head. Alright, I didn't save state, so I'm gonna have to do it now. where I went last time? No, oh, Mrs. Beakley. Ice creaming it up. Oh, man. Jesus, this is gonna be hard. Whoa, alright. God, how did I do this stuff as a kid? Yeah, I think that that's one of the things that might have been in Transylvania after that minecart section. I'm surprised there's no continues in this game. I seem to recall this game being pretty easy. Maybe I just played it to death. Okay, so I went the wrong way. <laughs> Yeah, I actually went years without... Oh, I'm at the boss. Um, playing video games at all. I had a Nintendo 64, and I had a GameCube, and I'm, you know, those consoles were kind of back-to-back. -back. But having the Nintendo 64, I didn't really do much um, with it. And then with the GameCube, I, I did um, even less. What happened is... Uh, 
I, I just, I kind of fell out of the routine. I wasn't too interested in video games anymore, and that's fine. Um, you know, there were a few um, highlights there for me. Majora's Mask, certainly, and uh, Wind Waker, and Pikmin, and all that great stuff. But I, I just kind of fell out of playing. I just wasn't very interested. When the Wii came out, the reason I got the Wii is because of the virtual console. The chance to kind of go back and play the games that I played as a kid was just very appealing to me. Uh, I don't really even know why, um, but it just seemed like it would be a lot of fun to sort of revisit that stuff. So I got it for the Virtual Console and replayed those games and was just, you know, I love the Wii. And I love the Wii because it reminded me of what it meant to play video games as a kid. It was so, so much fun. And replaying all those old NES games, they held up so well, and I had experiences like I'm having now, where I'm realizing how much of a game I actually remember. And the reason for that is just the way these games were designed. You know, they were designed for the purpose of being replayed over and over again. And sometimes that was because they were simply too difficult to finish in one sitting, but other times, I don't know. They just really seemed to want you to explore and have fun. They wanted you to come back because you enjoyed the time you've spent with it. And that's not something that I really feel in games anymore. Overall, of course. But, you know, I look at a game, a recent, relatively recent game that I would have loved, and... Oh, you jerk, you knocked me into the hole. Um, you know, something like Fallout 3, which I legitimately think is a brilliant game. I've only played it once, and I thought about playing it again, and I think I started another character, and I just... It, it just wasn't the same replaying it. Those games aren't replayable. As much as they want to be, you know, they think that giving you more to do and everything like that is going to make it more replayable. In honesty, I disagree. I don't think that having more to do makes a game replayable. I think making a game fun makes it replayable on its own. You know, I don't need a huge map, and I don't need 600 hours of gameplay. I've said it before, um, you know, Mega Man has, uh, we'll say, an hour of gameplay, if you know what you're doing. Um, but I've probably p played that more than I've played most other games, uh, you know, in terms of time spent with it. Fallout probably took me 30 hours to complete, um, but I've played Mega Man more, so really, what's the better value? You know, I, I've maybe put a hundred hours into Mega Man. I think people just get so hung up on, you know, game size and game length. And I, uh, if you didn't know this, I, I review video games for Nintendo Life, and it's, it's a great gig, and I love doing it. However, um, sometimes, you know, the commenters will they'll read what I would like to think is a very good review, whether I wrote it or not. A very um, well-done review, I think. And... Uh, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll get upset because the review didn't mention how many hours the game lasts or something like that. First of all, you can't, you can't ever put a total on that. The game could last uh, two hours for me and 60 for you. It, you can't do anything with that. I think the purpose of a review should be explaining whether or not the game is fun and how it's fun. And if it's not fun, what did it do wrong? And if it is fun, what did it do right? And any combination of those things. Because I think that that's the most important thing about a game to begin with. Um, I would much rather play a short game that I ended up loving than a long game that felt mediocre to me. And I think it's actually really damaging um, when people have that mindset about video games because then the, the developers need to cater to it. Um, they do that. I knew one of these things was going to fall. They do that because they know that people are going to complain and not buy their game if you know, some reviewer says that it only has, uh, you know, six hours of gameplay or something like that, which is a long time. I, I don't care if you disagree. Six hours is a fucking long time. Um. Ah, thanks, Bubba. How do I get out of here? Not like that, but whatever. Um, you know, they end up catering to that, and what they do, 
Is this back to Duckburg, or is this somewhere else on the stage? I do not. Was I down here? I guess I have to go this way. Um, they end up catering to it, but they end up catering to it by padding out a game. And best case scenario, what they do is they dull that game's impact. You know, they, they make it take so long to play through the game that it starts to lose meaning. That's best case scenario. Worst case scenario is they fill the game with garbage. You know, stupid, pointless collection quests and things like that that artificially lengthen the game and don't make it any more fun. That's so damaging. When game design is a slave to, um, let's see, consumer entitlement, I'll put it that way, it's, it's extremely limiting. And I think that that's the reason that, um, you know, indie games have come so much into fashion lately. It's because, by and large, they're not beholden to the same uh, critiques. If you play an indie game and it lasts two hours, your question is going to be, you know, what did I learn from this game or something like that? You know, what did it have to say about some personal philosophy of the developer or something like that? Man, I remember so much about this game. Uh, you know, like, th there's just this whole wealth of kind of different interpretations that go along with an indie game. And um, I think that that's great because it kind of gives them a chance to be noticed in a way that they otherwise wouldn't. Look at that, it's Mega Man 4. Um, but on the other hand, uh, on the other side of the equation, rather, you have the, the AAA games and such, and it's just not... I don't know, there's just not much room for experimentation there anymore, and I think that that's a little bit sad. And there's not much room for simplicity. We're never gonna have another major studio turn out a game like DuckTales. And, you know, you might hear that and laugh and say, well, you know, thank God for that. Great! But personally, I'm having more fun right now playing this game for what's probably the 65th time, you know, than I have with, with most major releases over the course of the past 10 years. There's really something to be said for simplicity, because it gives you something to master, it gives you something to enjoy um, in a superficial sense in the first place, which you can then later go back in and, um, you know, kind of hone your skills and adapt new strategies and find your hidden treasures and all stuff like that. And the only reason that I was able to do that is because I played this game so many times as a kid. I would not have played this game so many times as a kid if it lasted, you know, 75 hours. God, this is such a great music track.